Hi, Orange Girl here with another scrapbooking process video for you, and I am super excited to be joining Audrey for her 12 days of holiday scrapping videos. And um, I also wanted to let you know that I am using paper from the Paper Issues store. And so if you use the code Orange Girl, you can get 20% off anything you purchase from them. I am using the Coco Vanilla Studio um, Merry and Bright collection, and I am using mostly items from the ephemera pack and the 6x8 paper pad. So when I started, I thought I might use that paper that had the script writing on it as my background, and I ended up deciding to go with just a white cardstock. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking the six by eight papers and I'm cutting about one inch strips from those. And I had decided, I, to be honest, I'm going to be really honest, I am, a, I am a first grade teacher and we are headed back to school next week face to face after being virtual for a while. And one of the activities that I have planned for my students is a, making a tree, an evergreen tree, and um, we will be using strips of different types of paper and I just decided that I would kind of like to make a layout like this. This isn't anything earth shatteringly new. Um, you've probably seen a layout with something like this before. I've done this before in my December daily album that I do or try to do every year. I have some videos of that that will be coming up on my YouTube channel here soon. Um, but I just really liked these papers and I liked the six by eight pad and a smaller pattern, and I really wanted to use these all together. And at first I thought about using a cut file, and then I decided when I saw this and was working on cutting the strips for my first graders, I was like, oh, this would be a great opportunity to use the six by eight paper papers and create a layout that is a Christmas tree. So that's what I'm doing. And I like the way this ends up turning out a lot. So what I'm doing here is I'm kind of auditioning background papers here. I haven't decided what I want, but I know I want to have some sort of a border. So I look at that kind of peachy color and greens and a pattern and all that. And I end up going with this dark green. As a result, um, I end up changing out some of the strips that I started with originally because I didn't want as much of that dark green strip. So I ended up going back in and making that a smaller piece up at the top. So um, that was all I had planned. <laughs> I had one gold star left over from a, another layout that I've already completed. That, that uh, gold star came in um, the kit, or not kit, but the, the, in with the collection. And so, um, here, I guess I am not finished yet. I'm still going back and forth trying to figure out how I'm going to take out that bigger strip of green and come back in and use a smaller strip. So I'm still kind of moving those papers around a little bit, but as I'm going, I am roughing up the edges of um, each of them because I like the way that looks. And to be honest, at first I was thinking I was going to have all of the strips go super wonky and like overlap with each other and all that because I am more of a messy scrapper <laughs> and I like things kind of wonky. That's usually like my go-to, but I end up making them more straight here. So this is what I decided to do. I'm going to, I'm marking my paper with just a pencil and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add some green to the background. So this is going to go behind the tree and I decided to go ahead and use green. This is a Distress Oxide by um, Ranger Inc. Um, and it's, I think it's called something Sage. Let me look here, it's called Bundled Sage. And I'm just using the packaging technique that lots of scrapbookers use. Um, I put a little bit of it on the packaging, a um, little piece of plastic. And then I am adding some water to it and I am just putting it down on my page. So I'm taking some off with my um, paper towel. And then I am adding some uh, splatters across the top. Um, this would have worked out a little bit better and looked a little bit more watercolory had I used gesso. Um, on the background first and I usually do that but I didn't because I didn't really plan on 
doing this. So when, um, like I said, the only thing I really had planned was the strips of paper. <laughs> and so um, as I got going, I was like, oh, I think it needs a little mixed media. And I probably should have used some gesso in the background first. But here's the deal, you guys, I really like how it turns out in the end. So it doesn't, one of the things that I like about it is so much with when you don't use the gesso, um, a lot of it soaks into the paper. And I like the softer look. So for this layout, it worked out really well. So I was going through because I was going to use that gold star. I wanted to find some more gold things. So I went through my stash and I have a drawer that has a whole bunch of gold things in it. And I organized my supplies mostly by color. And so it was great. I went through and I found this like rickrack and... Um, like some sequins and another piece of ribbon that were all gold. And I decided just to kind of put those in between a few of the layers to add some more gold to the, to the background or to the, it almost looks like um, it, the gold pieces are, it almost looks like that might be the garland on, on the um, tree even because it's thinner, I suppose maybe is why I mean, I wasn't really going for that, but then when I got it finished, I was like, Oh, that, that must be it. So here is my photograph. This is uh, was taken like last week of my daughter and um, she plays the tuba. She is in fifth grade and she chose the tuba. Keep in mind that she um, is still using a booster car seat because she is <laughs> short and doesn't weigh a lot. And so her in a tuba is pretty funny. And she found in her, um, we've been virtual for the last month. And so even her band lessons have been virtual. And she found in her band book that um, it had a Christmas song in it, Jingle Bells. And so she decided that she was going to learn it, even though it was a few pages ahead of where she is. So on this day, um, she <laughs> this will actually be in my December album as well, like my December daily, because um, I may, I printed out two photos of this, a big one, and then this one. So I am not going to add a lot of journaling to this because I will have it in my December album. But I just really wanted to use it because I liked the tree in the background. The tree actually kind of looks like it's coming out of the tuba. But on this day, she practiced it and practiced it and got down to, she was doing pretty well, actually, by the end of the day. And she's played it since then as well. But um. So it was just a fun little <laughs> fun photo of her with this giant tuba. And it looks like our Christmas tree is coming out of the top of the tuba, like the Christmas tree is the mute or something <laughs> um, of the tuba. But anyway, so um, I used that photo and I went ahead and it's about um, almost three by almost four um, inches. And I added a little bit of peach paper that I have used um, as one of my strips. I had a little bit of that behind the photo. And then I went ahead and put some um, tissue paper because I almost always put tissue paper behind my photo. The main reason that I do that, to be honest, is because I really like using um, the tissue paper. It just kind of makes it stand out from the rest of the page a little bit subtly. Um, you might have seen me pull up close there. Um, I did off camera um, use my gold thread to stitch through each of those strips of paper. So the bottom strip is kind of a zigzag, but the rest of them are pretty much just a straight stitch. I did stitch an X over the tree trunk. Um, and then um, now I'm just adding some little bits. I didn't know what I, if I was going to decorate the tree and I, I thought about maybe punching out some circles and putting some circles on like as ornaments. There are ornaments that come in the ephemera pack, but they're kind of big for the tree. So I decided maybe that wouldn't work. So I'm kind of going just back and forth and looking through and seeing what my choices are. I have the ephemera pack and then I have the sticker sheet. And at one point I decided that I would cut up this ephemera piece of ephemera because I probably would never use it. And so I'm not really scared to cut things up, especially if I don't think it's something that I'm going to use. So I went ahead and fussy cut and I was thinking I was going to put some presents under my tree. I didn't like the way that they looked. Um, I even took a sticker and that's, I think, what I'm doing here now. And I cut, there's a present on a sticker. And I went ahead and cut that up and put some 
foam adhesive on the back so that I could, you know, move it around the page before I determine where I want it to go. And that looks okay, like, now that I'm looking at it right now, but I just didn't like it um, as I was doing it. I was like, eh, I don't really like it. And I need somewhere to put my title anyway. So I decided just to not do the gifts and go ahead and put my title at the bottom. So I went through a lot of my gold stuff. So I, I used gold thread to do the stitching and I'm going to put some gold thread behind um, some of my pieces of ephemera. Just I like to use tangled thread lots of places. And so I will do that in a couple of places um, on this layout, I think. And so I thought gold letters would be probably the best. So I went through and I have a bunch of gold letters in my stash. And the ones that I'm using, the ones you see there on the right are not what I end up using. The ones that I'm using come out of a, it's like a packet of them. You've probably seen them come up across the screen here. Um, and they are, I, I am almost positive they are Maggie Holmes, um, something Maggie Holmes. And I don't know, they're old. I've had them for a really long time and there's multiple sizes. So I end up going with this size and I'm using my um, straight edge ruler my T-square to um, kind of get it as straight as I can because I ended up not going wonky with all of these um, different pieces of strips of pa pattern paper. I ended up going straight. I used that um, uh, T-square to make all of them straight and I like the way that it looks even though that was not my original plan. So, um, Tuba Christmas is an actual thing. So I don't know if you know this or not, but, um, Tuba Christmas is a real thing. They get a lot of, uh, low brass, primarily tubas together <clears throat> and they play Christmas songs at Christmas time in our area anyway. And part of the reason that I know about this is because, um, I was in the hockey marching band when I was in college and the sousaphones, um, uh, I was friends with a lot of the sousaphone players and they, um, those that are around this area often participate in tuba Christmas. There was no tuba Christmas this year, but I did get tuba Christmas as my title, <laughs> um, due to COVID they, I think didn't want people gathering. So, um, as far as I know, there was no tuba Christmas this year. <clears throat> so I will be taking my daughter to that next year. Um, her first tuba Christmas concert. Because by then we should be able to gather, right? <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to, this gold star, I've, I had one left. I used um, the rest of them that came in this pack on another layout. And I'm adding just little bits of ephemera that were mostly words. So like a couple of little tickets that say things about December. I have that ho, ho, ho that's right beside um, the picture. And I also, there's a whole bunch of little hearts and I grabbed, I don't know, four or five of those. And I put those across the page and I did, off camera, I went through and I stitched through, I, I think I've already done that. I stitched through all of those little pieces. So, um, <clears throat> I think it says something about memories and um, December, sweet memories and December and joy to the world and all of those little strips with text on them. I went ahead and I stitched through them. And then if you follow my, if you are not a follower, please click follow if you like um, my work or at least look at a few other layouts and decide if it's something that you're going to like. Um, and then click uh, subscribe. Um, my daughter, there's something special about my daughter with butterflies. And so um, if you want to know about that story, you can leave me a comment and I'll tell you about that story. But uh, I always put a butterfly on every one of her, the layouts that have her in it that I have, I have done in the last uh, two years, a little over two years. And so um, I went ahead and put a butterfly on the tree and I stitched through that as well with some gold thread. Um, the other thing that I'm adding here, I, I, for, I toyed with the idea of putting Mary tuba Christmas, but then I decided that it was just too much. So what I'm doing here is I have some really chunky um, glitter and <laughs> this was really hard to put on <laughs> because um, it's not like big enough to, I mean, I maybe could have used tweezers, but it's not small enough like to use like you would do with real glitter, um, but it's bigger. Um, 
I don't know. It was just really hard to put on, but I always get it out. It would be great in a shaker. So that would be, I might have to use that in my December album, my December daily. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I might have to do that because I think this would be great in a December album. Um, and it's great on this page, but it took me a while <laughs> and it was frustrating and my fingers were completely coated with glue when I was done, but I like the way it turned out. I just kind of scattered it across the page and, um, glued it. Some of them are in really big chunks together and some of them are kind of more off on their own. I just kind of let them fall as they may. And there's the final, the final picture. So yeah, thanks a lot for stopping by. And this was Tuber Christmas. I hope you enjoyed it. Nothing earth shattering. I'm sure this layout has been done before, but I really like the way that it turned out. I like all the little bits and pieces. Thanks for stopping by and make sure you check out the other videos that I've linked below. Thank you to Audrey for in, um, letting me um, participate this year. Thanks a lot and have a Merry Christmas or whatever you celebrate. Um, and I will see you in my next video.